Hello everybody and welcome to the ARC Audio Technical Training Series on the PS8 and the PS8 Software User Interface. This is episode number one and we're going to cover how to download and locate the PS8 software, how to install it on your computer, as well as going over the all new process of how to do the firmware updates in a much, much simplified version of the process that we had before and the very important one that everybody's been waiting for, how to get the PSA updated properly for your existing users to prepare for the PSC controller. Now the new software is compatible on Windows 10, Windows 8, and Windows 7. We'll be doing our demonstration on a Windows 10 PC that has a program called Start 8 installed, and uh, mainly because I like some of the original functions and button locations of Windows 7. And you also will be required to have .NET Framework installed from Microsoft. This is a free program from Microsoft, so you can Google that and download that for free from Microsoft.com. So let's get started. First things first is we're going to visit arcaudio.com. Once you get the website popped up, come to products. We're going to go to processors, digital sound processors, and PS8. Once the PS8 product page is open, you'll find PS8 software download with download here. Now once you click on it, and depending on how your system set up, whether it saves it to a file folder or it saves it to your desktop, or if it's able to be dragged and dropped, you're going to want to bring it regardless to your desktop. Once you're on your desktop, you're going to go ahead and find PS8 3.0.0. And you're going to go ahead and double click on this to start up the setup wizard. You're going to go ahead and click Next. And we're going to click I Agree on the EULA. We do recommend that you read it though before you click I, I Agree. Click Next. And we're going to select everyone for people able to use it on this PC. And Last but not least, we do recommend that you keep the folder assignment where it is. That way everything's automated, easy, simple, and ready to go for you. And that way you don't have any issues in the future with your, uh, your settings files being saved to the wrong location and so on. We're going to click Next. And confirm installation, we're going to click Next. Now you might have a pop-up that comes up from your user account control. You're going to go ahead and click OK on that. And once you're done, installation complete and close. Now, one of the things about the PS8 software is its wide versatility compatibility. So in this case, since I've already had software installed on this computer once, it's going to pop up right here. But if you can't find it there, you can find it down in all programs. Or if you're on Windows 10, you can find it under your apps uh, tab and locate it there. We're going to go ahead and start the software. And as soon as the software starts up, you're going to notice some big, big changes over the original first version of the PSA software. Different graphics, different colors, lots of different functionality aspects have changed. And we've also simplified a lot of procedures and added some new features to the PSA as well, including a lot of work on the back end of it. So let's go ahead and move forward now and get the firmware updated. Now, if you are doing this for the first time and you just ordered your PS8, there's probably a good chance that it's got the right firmware on it. But we always recommend that if you're installing a PS8 for the first time in a vehicle, make sure that you always start your process by updating the firmware. If you are updating an existing version of the PS8, uh, that's been installed and you're updating it, make sure you update the software first. Now one thing that I do need to mention is that the PS8 software version 2 still allows you to keep your original version of the PS8 software from version 1 installed in the computer at the same time. This will allow you to retrieve those older setting files from past installs and save them as part of the export process which we cover in episode 2 and be able to import them in to reconfigure for the new format without losing all of your settings files and all of your tuning uh, time that you've put into making these vehicles sound great. So one thing you're going to notice already as we move forward with the firmware installation here is in the first version you had to start up the PSC or I'm sorry the PS8 and have the bootloader mode already started before you start the software. In this case, it doesn't matter anymore. So you can simply start your system just like if you were going to operate it normally. And you're going to notice USB connected as well as flashing blue light down here in the bottom left hand corner, which is our USB confirmation. This shows that we're communicating with the PS8 properly. Now, once you get everything fired up, just like if you were doing a normal operation, then you go over to your PS8. And with the PS8, you take a toothpick or pencil or ballpoint pen and find the bootloader uh, mode button switch. And you're going to press and you're going to hold that for about three to four seconds. 
what you should see is all the lights on the front of the display for the PS8 should turn on and stay solid and your amplifiers will turn off and you're going to notice in the top right hand corner that you have bootloader connected once you're in this mode go ahead and click on firmware and we're going to click on check web for new PSA firmware now I've already got this version of the software of the firmware installed not a big deal uh, it runs the same whether it's the same or it's an older version and you're going to click OK and you want to make sure that you don't interrupt this process so make sure that you've got a uh, good battery voltage um, you don't want to have a battery die in the midst of this and don't turn off your system or disconnect your computer in the middle of it let it run its course it's going to run up to about line 1200 or so depending on the version of the update as that can change from update to update in this case we finished at 1204 and by popular request we now have an indicator that says programming complete now, one of the nice function about the change in the firmware process is we've updated it now to where the uh, processor, as soon as it's complete, it automatically restarts the update process. And you can verify that by USB connected, as well as also down here in the bottom left-hand corner, the flashing light indicating that we have USB connection. Now that we've got the PS8 updated, the next step from here is to get the PS8 updated and ready to go for the PSE controller. Now, even if you don't have the controller already in your possession this is an extremely important process to do this update because the firmware for the controller is actually stored on the PS8 now the really cool part about this is this allows the controller even with all of the uh, personalized settings that you could potentially have for the tune on your vehicle it allow the controller to be plugged into any PS8 with a controller compatible firmware installed on it and allow it to plug right in without having to go through this update process each time. So to do the update, you're simply, while you're in this menu, gonna come up here to check web for new PSC firmware. And you're gonna see a series of code going through this screen. Now, while you're on this screen, you're also gonna notice that on your controller, your controller is going to have a please stand by menu displayed on the front. Now the purpose for the please stand by menu is just simply letting you know that you're connected to your controller. However, once you're done with the update, don't shut down your software, but simply come down and click on connected. Now this is gonna be if you are currently hooked up to a PS8 controller on your, P on your PS8, even if you don't have the firmware previously installed in it. Once you click on this connected box, it goes to disconnected. And you're gonna notice a change on the screen of your display. You're gonna notice that it's going to go black and it's gonna start rolling code itself. This is the PSC updating itself to the new firmware that is now on the actual PS8. And of course the PSC would do this as well, regardless of what uh, version you have. So this is its way of adapting to the individual application. You're gonna see it go through an erase and program cycle. And once it's all done, the front of the display, as you'll see here in a moment, will reset back to the home screen for the PSC. And at that point, you're completely done. So we're gonna go through about a three second boot up process here. And here comes the reset. And there we go. So at this point, you can carry on tuning or you can get on listening. Either way, this is as simple as it gets. But good luck and good tuning and stay tuned for the further episodes, especially chapter number two, which we're going to cover on how to transfer your old settings files from the old version of the PS8 software to this new version without losing any of that hard work you've put into it.